Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Oftentimes, I've been asked the question as to what patients are most suitable to ablation versus yttrium-90 resin microsphere therapy in the setting of metastatic colorectal carcinoma. And in spite of the fact that there are many, many technologies out there for ablation, radiofrequency ablation, microwave ablation, irreversible electroporation, ethanol ablation, and cryoablation, really ultimately what ablation is is destruction of visible tumor. Now, in that setting, we're restricted by the tumors that we can see, as well as how large they are, because if they're too large, we literally can't ablate the lesions. So that being said, our selection for ablation patients are generally those that are not eligible for quote-unquote surgical curative resection, those patients with recurrent disease, and those patients with, uh, with lesions of less than four centimeters, usually less than three lesions present. However, at ASCO 2015, Professor Ruhrs, uh, through his eight-year follow-up uh, of radiofrequency ablation patients in the CLOCK study, have demonstrated robust and long-term survival in those patients receiving ablation. However, the caveats to that are that within the study, 40% of the patients actually underwent open laparotomy. 20% of the patients received a surgical resection at the same time as the ablation and 60% of patients that had received ablation and chemotherapy actually had hepatic recurrence, so it came back in the liver. Another clinical trial that has been updated at ASCO 2015 is the CLOCK clinical trial. This is a clinical trial that randomized patients with liver-only disease, no more than nine hepatic metastases, no extrahepatic disease, to receive either standard of care chemotherapy or standard of care chemotherapy plus radiofrequency ablation. The main question of this clinical trial was, do we impact the overall survival of patients? The initial endpoint was overall survival at 30 months. From that perspective, both groups did very well. When the data was published, there was no difference in overall survival, and the study was written off as a negative clinical trial. Now we're nine years later or more, and the data has been re-represented with more mature follow-up. What we have learned is actually radiofrequency ablation in the setting of patients who have disease limited to the liver with nine or less lesions in combination with chemotherapy did impact overall survival. There was more than 40% improvement in the longevity of patients. I think it's very important to dissect this clinical trial, however, before we kind of jump into conclusions. When we look at the CLOCK clinical trial, about half of the patients or more had four lesions or less. So this was not a very extensive disease. And about half the patients underwent radiofrequency ablation plus resection. And therefore, I would argue that the management here is a curative intent management. Those patients have been rendered in a clinical remission. And when you look at the overall survival curves on the CLOCK clinical trial, you see that the benefit is really later on when patients are not relapsing. There's about 20, 30 percent of patients who are likely cured on this clinical trial. The take-home message is that if I cannot resect the hepatic metastases, but I can I can use radiofrequency ablation to burn completely some lesions and resect others, I can actually cure a patient or significantly prolong their progression-free survival. Frankly, the data is not too surprising to me. I think it, it tells me that we have to be very aggressive in patients with liver-only disease, and we have to shoot at full cytoreduction when we can. And, and that could be either surgery alone or a combination of radiofrequency ablation and surgery. But the other point that this clinical trial emphasizes is the importance of hepatic disease control. Because now you see that if you can't control the disease in the liver, you will likely impact the overall survival. Now, we hope that the same kind of endpoint that we see on the CLOCK clinical trial may also translate from the SURFLOX clinical trial 
And we hope that the disease control in the liver and the downstaging in the liver that is seen on the Surflox clinical trial with chemotherapy plus radioembolization may hopefully also result in an impact in overall survival. Now that could be in a portion of patients, say 20, 30 percent of patients, or could be more. And we have to wait and see what the data shows us, hopefully in another two years or so. One of the newest ablative procedures that has been developed is referred to as SABR, or SBRT, stereotactic beam radiotherapy. And what that consists of is a very complex algorithm which uses external beam radiation to radiate tumor. It's not without limitation because there are two components of it that really warrant consideration in this patient population. One is that the lesions have to be visible clearly visible in order to target. So in essence, SBRT is more of an ablative therapy, which is fundamentally different than yttrium-90 resin microsphere therapy, which is actually uh, targeting the tumor vasculature. They're two fundamentally different approaches. The second component is that oftentimes those patients that are receiving SBRT require fiducial placements. And what this means is that the patient has to come in on an outpatient basis and have a gold marker placed percutaneously from the skin through the liver into the tumor itself in order to be able to localize through external beam radiation. So I think although SBRT, a radiation oncology-based procedure, uh, may be thought of as radiotherapy, it's really more of an ablative therapy and falls within the category of radiofrequency ablation, microwave, and irreversible electroporation. Yttrium-90 resin microspheres represent a completely different mechanism of action in that the administration is based on the exploitation of the vasculature of the tumor itself administered in a transarterial method. So the particles themselves, although uh, can be perceived as being microscopic brachytherapy seeds, really follow along the blood flow of the tumor, utilizing that, uh, the tumor's vascular capacitance in blood vessels as a conduit to be able to place accurately and precisely the radioactive sources into the tumor while minimizing exposure into the parenchyma. The other question was regarding the use of radiation therapy to hepatic metastases. We do not use external beam radiation therapy to the liver. Uh, we do use occasionally what we call stereotactic body radiation therapy or radiosurgery. And that technique is basically a high dose of radiation therapy that can be given focally to the liver in few sessions. SBRT, or stereotactic body radiation therapy, has been associated with a high rate of control of liver metastases, but is not considered a definitive curative technique, so it does not replace surgery. The only technique that is considered curative at this point is surgical resection. Radiofrequency ablation is considered an adjunct intervention to surgery when you cannot resect all disease. And a combination of surgery and radiofrequency ablation can be curative in some patients. I think SBRT can be used in patients that you cannot perform surgery on. You have very small amount of disease, one or two lesions, and you're limited in your systemic chemotherapy. You want to take a break or, you know, the patient is not tolerating chemotherapy and you want to control one lesion or two lesions with SBRT. I think that is not unreasonable because we know that the local control is high. For patients with multifocal disease in the liver, I do not think there's any role for external beam radiation. There's definitely also no role for SBRT either. Uh, so that, that is how I approach those patients.